Hey guys, I'm Nathan here. Welcome back to this channel. So we're going to talk about this very powerful build behind me. Inside this, Fractal Design Define 7 XL. Okay, so before we get to the video, so our channel does a lot of PC cards, comparisons, and PC builds. So if you like our channel, make sure to subscribe our channel to not miss out on such amazing PC part comparisons and PC builds. So if you remember, we have this client, Gordon's client, which is a jeweler. So he built a, a set for him a few months ago. So now, uh, two weeks ago, he has requested Gordon to build a second PC. So Gordon came out with this super beast of a PC that's cost 15,000 Singapore dollars. It holds a Aorus TRX 40 Extreme, a 3970X, and four 2080 Ti's. Right now, I'm going to pass on to Gordon to let him go through what's so cool about this Define 7 and what is this client asking for in this new beast of a PC. So, Gordon, if you may take over. Thanks, Mel. First, we have the case out here. This is the Fractal Design Define 7 XL. One of the biggest full tower case that you can get. Probably be wondering why. And you may probably be wondering what is it all black and all that with no tempered glass. I'll get to that in a bit, but first let me show you what's going on inside there. Yeah, the first thing you'll notice is that yeah, it's very easy to open. So you just take out the latch, just cover here one side. And there you go, you have everything inside there. Okay, so let me take you through as to what's going on inside here. So of course, first and foremost, we have four RTX 2080 Ti's from Gigabyte, the Turbo Edition. They are all sitting on the TRX 40 Aorus x also from Gigabyte. For RAM, we have 64 gig of G Skill Flare X, the 200 megahertz CL16. So it's four stick of 16 gigabytes. And the CPU wise is the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 3970X or 32464 thread of it. Now, you might probably be wondering what does our jeweler want with a set like this? Well, it turns out that he came to us and he requested for a machine which can do both Cinema 4D as well as Octane. Now, as you all know, Cinema 4D is pretty much very CPU intensive and Octane is pretty much it loves CUDA calls. The more CUDA calls we give it, the merrier it is. For Octane, that's what the 4 RTX 2080 Ti is for. Now, I didn't really quite get a lot of details as to why he wanted this, but I think I can make some educated guesses. For example, he wants to show to you as a customer, this is your new ring, this is your new necklace, this is what the diamond is going to look like, this is what this gem is going to look like, so on and so forth. I'm just guessing this is what he probably wants to do. Some of the parts here were chosen for very, very specific reasons. The TRX 40 Aorus Extreme was chosen because number one, it's one of the best TRX 40 motherboards around. But we ran into the issue of this motherboard being XL ATX, which means that it's not only longer this way, like a EATX motherboard, it's also longer this way. So which kind of meant that a lot of chassis it couldn't really fit into. So for us to be able to do what we wanted it to do and what our client wanted to do by extension, we had to really look hard for a case to fit this requirement. And also because our client made it a priority, he wanted this set to be quiet. So he wanted a set with good sound proving and all that. So we had to search around quite a fair bit and we heard that the Define 7 XL had just come out from Factor Design. We were one of the first in Singapore to actually incorporate it. So this is what you see here. As of right now in Singapore, there are only five pieces. This is one of them. So since we went through all the trouble to get the Define 7 XL for our customer, so I figured this would be a good time to talk a little bit more on this case. So as someone who has worked quite a fair bit on his predecessor, the Define R6, well, there have been quite a couple of changes to it actually, which I'll just try to point out briefly. For one thing, out of the box, finally, the door opens this way. Why do I want to mention that? Because the R6, by default out of the box, was fitted with the hinges here. So it will actually open this way, which is a bit counterintuitive for the majority of people who have their keyboard here, the monitor here, and the set to their right. But of course, if you're in the situation that your set is on this side and you need the door to open on the left, like the R6, you can always fit the latches this way. The other thing that I like to talk about is this thing, the door itself. A lot of cases on the market, they either go for the four thumb screws here, which always get lost, or they go for like two captive screws here, which sometimes drop off. Very annoying. What Tractor has done is that they have kept the latch system from the R6. So you just pull here. And off it comes. If you want to put it back, it's also very easy. For the top cover, the Define 7 comes with two top covers. One is solid panel with soundproofing, 
The other one is the mesh panel. We have elected to give this customer the mesh panel. So I'm going to take out the mesh, the top panel. So you can see, you just put your thumb here. Ah. And it comes right off. This is the mesh panel itself. It's a bit kind of hard to see, but you can see that the filter is right over here. See if I can get it off. So, there. This the top. top. For the R6, this was a little bit harder because it had a little button down here that you have to press to lift this thing off. So thankfully for the R7, what they did was they simplify it. They just use this method. No more button. I'm not going to show the other side because the other side, the way it opens is identical to here. Then for the front filter, okay, you can see there's the sound padding material right here. So okay, here. Even on idle, the set is noticeably louder with the top open. Oh. Yeah, you can hear that. So this thing is here for a reason. The under cover, under filter is here. So that's for the PSU and what goes on underneath. And the front filter, how to get it out, is like that. So yeah, these are the couple of reasons we went with this case for this customer. Of course, we wanted to make it as easy for the customer to be able to maintain this set. Whether it's cleaning up or whether it's easy for us to be able to help him easily upgrade at storage, that kind of thing. Out of all the cases that are available, the full tower cases, we decided upon this one for the customer. So Gordon, what about water cooling? I will say for water cooling, if let's say this customer wanted to go with a water cooling option later on for his components and that, he most certainly can. I mean, you can see from the inside, there's quite a fair bit of room. Like right now here, this is where the hard disk currently sits. But I could imagine that you could probably put like a reservoir down here. And you could probably run loops here. You could have a 360mm radiator here, another 360mm radiator here. Yeah, so there's plenty of options for this customer should he want to go to the water cooling route. Can it be done? Yes, it can be done. And I think you'll probably be asking the question, why don't we do it now? The customer wanted a system with a high emphasis on reliability. So be as it may, air cooling will always be more reliable than any form of liquid cooling because you don't have to worry about things like pump failure, that kind of thing. So that's why you notice we decided to stick the default blower style air coolers for the Gigabyte 2080 Ti's. And in lieu of a liquid cooler for the 3970X, we have chosen the Nocturne U14S, which is considered one of the best and one of the biggest air coolers we can get for the AMD Threadripper platform. So yeah, this is the philosophy of why we went with all air cooling for this particular set so. But how are the temps for the stack of 4 GPUs? I would say for the temps, you are probably looking at about 80s, low 80s like that. But I mean, that will be one of the drawbacks for sticking with 4 air setup. But the GPUs are rated to run at that temperature, so that's fine for them. Power draw is about 1000 watts. Power draw, I think you are looking at about, let's see, each of them 250 watts on average. That guy probably draws another 250 to 300 watts. So yeah, that's why the power supply that's sitting down here is the Corsair AX1600i. Nothing less. Because yeah, to power this amount of components, you're looking at that kind of a power supply. And the AX1600i to us has always been a reliable tank for situation like this. Plus it also helps that the warranty for the 1600i is really long, it's like 10 years. That shows you how much confidence that Corsair has in the quality of that for this particular power supply. So this is a screen capture of the set itself. I have hardware in 464 at the corner right down there. So I decided to use two very relevant benchmarks for this particular client. Since he is going to be using Cinema 4D as well as Octane for both CPU and GPU render load. So I've decided to pull out Cinebench R20 as well as Octane Bench. I'm going to kick it off in just a moment. So we'll start off the test itself. Now, while it's running through this test, I'd just like to run through a bit of commentary. You see the little, uh, yeah, the Intel Xeon Platinum 8168. Now, do take note that this score down here, it says down there 48C98 threads because that's two of this Intel Xeon Platinum 8168. Now, if you think about it, this CPU, the 8168, used to cost about 9,000 US dollars a piece. So, and this score was generated by having two of them. That's 18,000 USD. Now, you look at the score down here, this Threat Ripper matches the score of those two 8168. And this entire set, with all four GPUs and all that, it costs about 15,000 Singapore dollars or about a little bit over 10,000 USDs. What does this tell you? This tells you that just the last couple of years alone, just how far price to performance has come. You think about it this way, not too long ago, 
18,000 USD got you just the CPU for this kind of CPU horsepower. But now, for less than 11,000 USD, you not only get that similar CPU horsepower, you also get four RTX 2080 Ti's, 64 gigs of RAM, and a lot of other goodies as well. So right now, I am kicking off the Optane bench itself. So from this point, I'm just gonna fast forward. Okay, as you can see, the benchmark has finished and you can see that, yeah, the score is 1220.29. So you can see it's pretty much almost perfect scaling. So each GPU is about 300 to 350 on average the score. So 300 times 4, you get a little bit over 1.2K. So yeah, it's almost perfect, almost linear scaling itself. Octane is a CUDA-based renderer that basically the more CUDA calls you give him, the happier he is. All right, so we have run through the random benchmark. So of course, God has mentioned this piece of PC definitely proven what it's done. The scores are remarkable. So we hope that the customer will be very pleased with what we are going to provide for him. So this for 2080 Ti's will definitely serve a long way for what he needs for his rendering tasks and customization tasks. This PC will be going out very, very soon. So if you want to have such a PC, let me know. Let Gordon know in the comment section below. What do you think about having 480 Ti's in your system? Do you think you'll be having such a PC? Also, you can write down in these comment sections. So if you like this video, do give us a thumbs up. Before you leave, I'd like to recommend this video. If you have not caught part one of this dual PC, you can do so in this video. And yeah, very important, make sure to click on the i icon to subscribe to our channel. And uh, click on the bell to know when we put up new videos. So from Gordon and I, we are out. Bye.